everyone to another episode of The Latest Thread. Uh, today we have a very special uh, episode with some special guests. Our topic today is all about men who quilt. And we have three guests with us who happen to be men who quilt. So let's introduce them. We have uh, Andrew Lee, who is known as the Combat Quilter. We have Jason Blackmore, who is from Love Shack Quilt. And Dwayne Karen from Cross and Crown Quilting. I hope I got that all right. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, welcome and thanks so much for uh, taking a bit of your day to spend with us and talk with us a little bit about what you do. Um, we have some questions for all of you. Um, and so we hope that you'll um, entertain us a little bit with uh, some answers. Uh, I'm interested in, first of all, what you guys did before you became a quilter. So I'm just going to go in order of who's the next up on my screen. Andrew, you're there. So why don't you start? Um, I was a professional truck driver. I hauled Yamaha jet boats throughout the United States. And that's, I was a truck driver for nine years after I got out of active duty army. And you're now a quilter. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we double that question up with, how did that transition into quilting? And then we'll move on. Transition as in, um, I was gifted a Statler um, after a speech that I had given at the Tennessee Valley Quilters Association's yearly meeting. And in an effort to continue my hopes and dreams of, of creating more quilts of valor to rep uh, more veterans in quilts. Awesome. Which one of you guys wants to go next? Come on, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> uh, well, I was a uh, piping designer slash drafter in oil and gas um, here in Alberta. Um, I did that probably about 12 years um, and then our economy took a nosedive and instead of sitting around the house doing nothing my wife made me start quilting <laughs> <laughs> and here I am <laughs> how about you Duane um, I was a carpenter for 36 years for McDonnell Douglas and then subsequently the Boeing Company. And um, when I left, I retired from Boeing. I was uh, actually too young to actually retire and not do anything. And I'm strung a little bit too tight to not do anything. So um, we had a plan before I retired, you know, to get another job or start a different career. And uh, we always kind of talked about this quilting. We had always gone to quilt shows and um, because my wife is a quilter, so she would go to shows, so therefore I would go to shows. And I would look at the quilts for a while, but I was always kind of drawn to the machine. I was always kind of fascinated by the machines and the computerized quilting. And so it was an opportunity to kind of buy a machine and hop in and start a little business and start a second career. So it really worked out good. We enjoy it. So both of you, Duane and Jason, mentioned that you have a better half that kind of, I mean, you may not have ended up in quilting if, if not for that, but Andrew, we didn't hear about, um, is there any other influence for you? Well, initially my wife said that we didn't do enough together. You know, we were remodeling a house, we do yard work, I visit her parents. Um, I love her, but would never work with her or for her, so... Um, I'm not sure what she had, had expected for, for us to do more than what we were already doing together. It just so happened that I beat her home one day from work and in the mailbox was a Joanne quilted table runner class. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna go down in history as the greatest man in the world. I can make three women happy for $30. <laughs> I made one for my mom. She made one for her mom. We did it together. It's out of the norm. Um, and I got addicted, got hooked. 
So I guess we could move right on to, into uh, Andrew while you've got the floor. Tell us a little bit about what your daily quilting life is like now. Um, I try to quilt at least one quilt a day for a customer and I try to, and I always do one quilt of valor a day. Um, sometimes that's three days a week, sometimes it's five days a week. Uh, the most quilts of valor I've done in one day is six. Um, yeah, I, I'm very efficient um, in my uh, quilting, loading and unloading of, of quilts because the military has trained me to be efficient. So no offense to Jason or Dwayne, but I have a leg up with that on, on being a little bit faster and more efficient so that I can do more. I'm obviously never going to catch Jason, but I'm making an effort. <laughs> and how has that changed since COVID? Has, has there been any change at all? Um, it, in, the, in the initial stage, it slacked off a little bit because people didn't want, you know, I, I've learned early on from some mentorship with Becky from Becky's Barn that um, not, to not allow customers to come to the house um, at, at any time, all the time, so that it doesn't, you know, get into my routine and that way I can stay focused and not spend three hours, you know, talking to somebody about my current projects and, and such. So I go and pick up quilts. Um, it's easier that way. That, I mean, I was a truck driver, so driving around town isn't a big deal for me. So initially the, the COVID ordeal, you know, slacked off, but has been steady after about, after about 60 to, 60 to you know, 70 days, it, it picked right back up because people were home completing quilts. Mm. Yeah. And what about you guys, your daily, your daily life and how it may have changed since COVID? Go, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, my life really hasn't changed at all. I'm a homebody. I like my, my alone time. So um yeah i not much has changed at all for me um maybe the first two weeks it was uh two or three weeks maybe it was a little bit slow but it just picked up fiercely for for me um after that point and i've been going strong with lots of customer quilts since so what's your daily quilting your average day like Oh, it's great. I get to spend lots of time around a woman I love. <laughs> and since I wasn't introduced as Sharon's husband, I'm Sharon's husband. Yes. Yeah, we have the same last name for a reason. Yeah. How about uh, you doing, or sorry, go ahead. Were you wanting to say more? I was just going to say, I, 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 I do really like the flexibility of, of working for um, ourselves. Um, that's something that I never had before. Um, I, my job, I had to be very meticulous. Um, you can't design a gas plant and, and not be meticulous because that's how people die. So I'm, Sharon will point out sometimes to lots of customers that I'm more picky than she is. And that's my, um, that's my thing is I'm, I'm very picky, very meticulous and, and if the job's not done right, I'm not happy. I, I will pick and I have picked entire quilts out because I didn't like the job that, that, that I did. No problem. Pick it all out and redo it. Hey, Wayne, you've got the floor. Okay. Um, so um, when we started our business, we kind of started out slow and we had, we had kind of a business plan set up to where we would start out slow and start taking customers when we felt comfortable taking customers and we built our business from there. So Jan, my wife was um, a nurse practitioner at the time and she wasn't really ready to leave medicine quite yet. And so I was doing like 85% of the quilting or more. And I would, you know, like uh, Andrew was saying, try and quilt at least one quilt a day, you know, to keep your business running, if not more, and have one quilting and, and one on the machine, you know, and, and setting up for the next quilt. 
And um, that kind of morphed into a little bit of teaching for Gamble, um, kind of just local teaching. And then I got uh, hired on at Gamble in kind of an educational role. So everything changed then. Um, I always like to travel and everything. So um, it turned into a good opportunity for me, uh, especially before COVID when we still could travel and um, do shows and events, you know, so that was a lot of fun. So I don't quilt a whole lot anymore. Now um, Jan is doing 85% of the quilting and I'm a supporting role. So and for anybody who's watching that doesn't know that um, Dwayne is the where's the gamble truck today guy. That's, <laughs> that's him. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, so Jason, you already had said kind of what your favorite, not necessarily your favorite part of your job, but that you really enjoy being at home. But I would like to hear from each of you what you do enjoy about quilting maybe a little bit more than just being at home. Like what, what's your favorite part of your job? You might as well bounce back to Andrew. Okay. Um, my favorite part is the relation with the customer because I, unlike some quilters, I, I pick, you know, two or three different pantographs that I think would work. And then of course I shoot them a picture of the three choices that I have, you know, to allow them to have a little bit of freedom. That way, if it doesn't turn out right, it's, it's their choice, not mine. Um, I haven't had any, any complaints about that yet, but for whatever reason, every time that I have always chosen one of those three that I thought that would look best, 99.99% .99 of the time, they come back choosing the one that I had already thought was going to be right. And the only one time of the 218 quilts that I have done was different was because a woman found a pantograph that she wanted specifically on her quilt after I had sent her the direction of the three that I had had. So I really like that artistic, um, not, not necessarily banter, but decision-making process of how we get to a, a better looking finished product. Jason and Duane. I always it's enjoy like we're following working. an order so we can mix it up a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always enjoyed working with the machine. I always enjoyed seeing uh, what we could do with the machine. And that's what it was always about for me is, is how uh, can we design new patterns, how we can integrate, you know, different designs into the machine, what we could stitch out. You know, I always thought with these machines, like this one behind me here that we could virtually stitch anything that we can imagine, you know, so, um, and different ways to load quilts, different threads, different concepts, you know, and different things that we could do to make quilts pop, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, always a challenge, you know, to, to build something and watch it come out on the machine. It's really cool. I'm kind of a little bit of a mix, uh, the same, uh, uh, a little bit of an what Andrew has said and uh, a little bit of what Dwayne has said. Um, um, I really enjoy seeing the happiness of a customer when the majority of, of my customers have, have already been here or they've seen my work online and they just say, do your thing. So when I get to just have the freedom to do my thing and then they're absolutely floored with the result, I love that satisfaction. Um, and then, uh, like Dwayne said, the machine, to me, the machine, it's, it's awesome. Um, when I first went to school for, for my previous career, I took both manual and computer drafting but the majority of my career was as a uh, drafter on the computer. So, and I'm a computer nerd. I build computers. I, I play programming type games. I, I, I'm, I'm all about computers. So the Statler, it, it's a dream to uh, uh, 
to work on. I, I love that thing. Um, it's and that's uh, that's probably uh, one of the top things for me is to to be able to to feel like I'm still within the realm of what I went to to school for the drafting aspect where you you have have all of that stuff that you can do on Creative Studio and then it transfers onto the quilt. Shell from Gamble. Today I'm going to show you how to use a TOA bobbin case tension gauge. I'm going to put my bobbin into the bobbin case, insert it into the TOA gauge, uh, under the first wheel, over the second wheel, and pull to the right. Uh, when I pull, it does not pull smoothly. This is an indication that you have some kind of issue. Um, that could be your bobbin case is bent, it could be a badly wound bobbin, but that's not something we want to stick into our machine. Uh, most Gamble machines should run between 180 and 220, unless you have a Premier, which is an 18 inch, those ones run at 250 to 300. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick my screwdriver in here to the tension screw on the side of this bobbin case, tighten it up a little bit, and try again. And you can see that now it's pulling a nice smooth even 200. This would be a bo good bobbin, good bobbin case setup, ready to go. Well, welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that little video you just watched and we're going to get right back into talking to the guys and I'll have them answer some more questions. I'd like to ask a question if possible. I am curious as to, for all three of you guys, how was the transition from having had your previous careers into this women's world of quilting did it feel weird i mean or you know to to take on something you know that's so different from what all of you have done previously how was the transition anyone when i left when i left boeing it was it was well just retiring from a job that you worked at for 36 years was a transition enough because it takes a while to get used to not going to work every day and then the realization that you started a business and now you're responsible for this entire business and you've made an investment back here and um, and everything else that goes with starting a, a quilting business you know and uh, it was it was uh, it was intense for a while it took a, a lot to work through that you know All right, I'll, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and go if that's all right, Jason. Sure. Um, uh, I, I'm, my story is a little bit different because I was a or am a veteran. I do have PTSD and I had tried the drinking. I tried the prescription drug thing um, because I was on an effector. You know, it was a serotonin re reducer inhibitor. So it made me pretty much a zombie and flatline with emotion. Uh, in my day-to-day -day routine. And after I got away from all of that, um, video games became my, my next source as trying to escape, you know, some of my PTSD issues. And then all of a sudden, you know, quilting became that. So I honestly didn't care what the persona was about the rest of the world because I was healing and actually was finally at my point where I could live life and, and be myself and, and happy and enjoy things again. So I, or, or buried in the backyard for that matter. I mean, my wife had said, you know, many times that uh, that was my alternative, either, you know, find some way to get right or she was going to bury me in the backyard, you know, that, um, and, and it was tough. I mean, it was one of those things, you know, that I wasn't an easy person to deal with. And uh, in, the, in the growth of, uh, of healing and my, and my therapy, uh, quilting then not only, you know, incorporated that addictive trait that it had, um, I then was at the extreme for a while where that's all I would do is quilt because that was the only place I, I could escape those demons. And, you know, everything is good in moderation. So I had to finally find that uh, happy place uh, or, or, you know, compromise to not only survive and be a contributing member of the family, but also be able to be uh, alive and well, you know, mentally for myself. We're glad you found quilting. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, for me, 
it wasn't so much about, um, oh, it's a, a, a woman's sort of hobby or, or whatnot. Um, what I found tough was being forced out of a career that I actually enjoyed. Um, and, and part of that is the, the history of that for me is throughout, throughout school, starting at like grade three school, I hated it. School was, my marks were always poor. Um, once I graduated high school, it was party time. Um, I didn't go back to school to get into that career until I was about 29 or 30 years old um, because I wanted a change because I had done a lot of construction, uh, um, flat roofing, backbreaking type work. And I, I wanted something that, that uh, wasn't so hard on the body and, and quite frankly paid better. So I, I put myself into school. Uh, I was a straight a student um, and I loved my career so the toughness for me was was uh, was the fact that I felt forced into a transition that I, that I just had no control over um, but at the same point you know I'm very thankful for it because if I didn't have have the white quilter that I could help out and I transition into being a long arm quilter myself, I have no idea where I would be right now. So great stories. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing all that. <laughs> well, I just want to add, you know, my husband, like Andrew, he was in the army for many years and now he's an over the road truck driver, but he's getting, because he's obviously older than Andrew, getting to the point where, you know, he doesn't want to be over the road anymore. And he's mentioned several times about wanting to be part of this business of quilting. And he's always been totally supportive and, you know, very involved, you know, he's pieced one quilt thus far. But, you know, I don't know about Sharon and Jason, but just the thought of working at home together, not so sure how great of an idea that will be, even though we've been married forever and we're a great team, but that totally changes, you know. <laughs> so that's a whole different, you know, thing working together as a team in the home i think it takes a while to to really get into a groove of what because i was so used to controlling every aspect of my quilting business and then i had to hand some of it over to somebody else that did things a little bit differently and maybe even better than me so that was like hey my this was my idea and you can do it better than me so you know it's kind of it kind of stinks a little bit right but um, we really have our good days, our bad days, I should say, but most of them are great days. And, and I, don't, I feel really fortunate because I know that's not a very common thing. People say, oh, you're so lucky. And I, I do feel lucky because, you know, my ex, I couldn't do that with. <laughs> There's no way. And, you know, some other people, I know they have great relationships and marriages, but you just, there's no way they could work together. So yeah. you get into a groove and... Yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. you are lucky because I could never do that. And I'm not so <laughs> sure yet. <laughs> You're gonna find out real soon, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had to work out our, our defined roles. You know, one of us would, would do one thing and she does more of the books and and um more of the customer interaction and now she has most of it she's doing most of the business now but um you know you just have to have your defined roles and learn how to work together because it, it is different and we both have different strengths and she's far more artistic than i am but i'm you know head and shoulders technically of, of above you know better than she is from that standpoint so it, it's um yeah, you just have to work it out. Are you, I, so is Jan the, the creative messy type like me? 
And then you're like, everything has to be so orderly and neat, like Jason. <laughs> no, I'm not a neat freak, but uh, my role now is more like um, her making her ideas come to fruition, you know. It's just like if she has this idea, and it's like, oh, well, that's really cool. Now, how are we going to do this? You know, yeah. how, how can we make that happen? So I'm better at that, but I'm not, I'm not the artistic one. You know, men only see about nine colors, and black and white are two of them. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we need that artistic influence. Andrew, you get to call all your own shots. I, I do. Um, however, dot, 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 when I need a second opinion or I'm second guessing myself, I always just ask my wife to come out and look at a thread color um, or a pattern that's laid out on the screen already. Because sometimes my idea of over quilting and her idea of over quilting are two different things. Because I really struggle with the balance between allowing a design to really show out on a quilt versus it being over quilted. Mm. <clears throat> has she got at all into quilting because of you? She, she has done more quilts because of me, but she, I don't touch her embroidery machine and she doesn't touch my long arm. Fair enough. <laughs> do any of you do free motion quilting? Not at all. I've played around with it a little bit, um, but mainly just like rule of work type stuff. Because you can make it perfect. Right. He can have control. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I agree with Jason. I'm, I'm too, ex too, too OCD, too much of a, a straight and narrow that I would rather manipulate the design in the software and change it to what I need it to be and then allow it to repeat itself perfectly. I always kind of had a problem, like I, I would do a lot of computerized, you know, do, do computerized designs. And there's a lot of times where I wish I could do some nice fills. It would be so much easier to do fills freehand than it would be to, you know, draw them and place them in there. But then, then like the computerized designs would look, um, you know, geometrically perfect and everything. And then my free motion quilting would be like kind of jagged and everything. And they didn't look together, you know, it's like, um, Ava says it's uh, consistently inconsistent, but the computerized quilting is not inconsistent it's always the same and they just didn't look to me like they melded very well my my hand guided but see, you know as a hand guider like when i go to a show and i, I like i want to look at those quilts up close and then i start looking for the repetition to know if it was hand guided or computerized so mm -hmm. yeah so but jason your hand guiding sorry. you'd be more perfect yeah that jason um <laughs> plays around with some um, music software, writing music and recording his own music. And he has a, um, you can correct me if I'm saying it wrong, Jason, um, it's called a humanized element or something where it will take like a perfectly even drum beat and every so often it'll just make one that is a little bit off. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a humanizing element that just kind of softens everything so it doesn't seem so static and controlled and perfect is that am i explaining that right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i i am a heavy metal guy so uh the kind of music that i'm into has uh two bass kick drums and they usually both go back and forth very quickly um and in a, a computerized drum program like like i use if you don't have that, if you don't have that element to make it sound more human, because a human's one of one of your feet is going to be stronger than the other, um, it will hit the the bass drum a little bit harder than the other. So there's a slight variation in the t the tone between one kick drum and another. So there's there is a feature in my software that I use that's called humanize and it will change uh, the velocity of the, of the hit on, on the kick drum and it will just randomize it throughout. So it gives it that human feel. So 
when the listener doesn't hear it and say, oh yeah, that's definitely a drum machine. Like I've had people ask me, oh, who played drums for you on, on some stuff that I've done. So it, wor it works pretty well. I wonder if we would ever put that into our software. Probably not, hey? <laughs> Yeah, let's just put, put a, a little. Big a little, a little <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dog bumped me. <laughs> Andrew is saying no, no, no. <laughs> please, right? please don't. I'd have to pick it out and then go back and redo it. That's yeah, it. it's the little OCD button with a cross through it on the computer. <laughs> so you're going to make it an additional feature? Okay, uh, I'm okay with that. You just, can turn it on and off. Yeah, I, I would never turn it on, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I would either. <laughs> we can do that on our own. <laughs> yeah, just just by not cleaning our wheels and tracks often enough, we can we can recreate that look. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have any other questions for these guys? I have one more. If you guys think of something, of course feel free to jump in. But um, I was curious if you had any words of advice or inspiration to give to anybody, any other quilters that are listening, uh, what would it be? Well, if you're a guy, don't be, uh, don't be afraid to jump in. It's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it just amplifies your manliness. And I guess my inspiration is, is to follow your hopes and dreams. I mean, for the longest time, everybody thought that long arming was just going to be a hobby for people and uh, a business. And it, somewhere, some you know, some person said, "If you love what you do for your job, you'll never work a day in your life." And I completely uh, feel that. I've really enjoyed this business. This wasn't something I thought that I would ever um, pick, you know. But um, I really enjoyed it. And the most, uh, the, the thing I enjoy most is the people involved in, in quilting and the quilting industry and the people that we work with at Gamble. It's just been awesome people, you know, and um, your clients are happy when they bring you a quilt and they're happy when they leave. Well, hopefully they're happy when they leave. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's kind of a, a, you can trust your customers, you know, most of the time, almost always, you know, there's never like you're going to get paid once in a while, there's an issue or something, but, but for the most part, I think it's an awesome business. It really is. I, I really enjoyed um, working in this industry. Those are pretty good people. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of good people. Um, yeah, being a man in this industry, you have to be secure enough, I guess, um, to, to carry it. But after a while, it's just like, you know, there's a lot of shows we've gone to where there's like 100 women in the room and I'm the only man there, you know? And it's like, okay, well, that's, that's the way it is. Um, but as far as starting a business, if you're a guy in the business, um, you really stand out. People remember you at quilt shops and, and your clients, you know, remember you. And um, so you do stand out. You have to do nice work. I mean, you have to do really good professional work. You don't want to stand out in the wrong way. But um, so it's, I found it helpful to be a guy in the business. I really did because people remember you and they'll, they'll give you a shot. They'll, they'll give you a chance to do a really nice quilt. You know, um, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what you said about like um, being, you know, the one guy and, and uh, you know, the hundred, the hundred women. And it just reminded me of it because we do have customers come to our house by appointment. And um, uh, every once in a while, if it's a new, brand new customer and Jason answers the door, they'll be like, am I at the right place? Because it just doesn't look like, I don't know what a typical male quilter is, looks like, but they just, they're like, okay, the beard, he's got a heavy metal t-shirt and tattoos up both sides of his arms. I 
and a big dog barking. I think I'm at the wrong house. And then the, I just love how they're always so pleasantly surprised. And I'm not just speaking for, for Jason's work, but I, I love hearing that, you know, there's this really talented uh, quilter, even if it's a guy or not, just, you know, they're so thrilled with the work that was done. And it just gives you a sense of, of, of pride, right? So mm -hmm. I know I'm proud of, I'm, 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 okay. I'm proud of Andrew and Duane. I'm proud of you guys too, but I'm especially proud of my own husband. I'm a little bit biased with that because um, he's just broken through some barriers and um, quilting just wasn't something that he saw that was anything that for anyone other than like little old ladies sitting around a hoop, right? And so it's, it's completely, it's completely changed. So, yeah. So you guys are all on social media. Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Jason, if you could go ahead and find one of those hoops and take that picture for us. Um, <laughs> I, I think that could be your new logo or, or something. <laughs> Tattoos and, yeah. and heavy metal t-shirt. I mean, I, I just think that, that the imagery would be, you know, kind of cool to use that as a, as a gimmick, if you will. Yeah. You know, try to br break the ice. I've, uh, I, I made my own uh instagram hashtag called metalhead quilter I'll check that out I, you, you'll find i think three pictures <laughs> <laughs> with that hashtag on it and but so speaking of your instagram you are sorry did you want to go ahead yeah i did thank you no but uh it is i i kind of get a, 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 a laugh out of that when I answer the door and I get that like is this the quilting place mm -hmm. kind of you know I, I just find it very amusing because uh, I mean a lot of people do they judge by what they see and um, I, I do in fact have a customer that she was like, what a man quilt, just never even seen me yet, just a man quilter. And um, she absolutely, the first quilt that I did, she's absolutely over the moon with my work. And and she she uh, brags about my work to other people. And, and Is she the one that's making you a quilt right now? No, that's somebody else. He has a customer <laughs> who is making him a quilt. I, it was, it was a joke. She brought this awesome uh, stormtrooper quilt here. And um, after I was done with it and she came to pick up, I said, oh, thank you so much for making this for me for Christmas. And um, the last time she, she was here about a week or so ago to drop off, she mentioned my quilt that she was working on. I'm like, what? She's like, the Stormtrooper one. I was like, for real? She's like, yeah, you'll have to get your own backing, but I've, I've got it, you know, I'm working on it. And I was like, wow, I, thank you so much. I, I totally didn't expect anything like that. That's not to mention all the food items that I was, apparently yeah, are being yeah, gifted to the, you. It's that. like, yes. I think I got something once in all the years I've been quilting. You know, that Same. gives benefits to being male quilters, I think. <laughs> yeah. I I've, think they I've, must dote on them a little bit more. Yeah. I, I've got <laughs> some really great banana bread one time. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> it was still warm. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was still warm. Um, I had another customer bring a, a few cuts of meat so that I could put it on. I've got a pit boss uh, smoker that I love using. So she brought us uh, some cuts of meat to, to put out on the smoker. Yeah, I've, I've gotten a few food items for sure. <laughs> it's been awesome. I, you I, must think I don't feed you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to step up my game, I guess. I, maybe well, you maybe we'll give some pointers, Jason. You know what it was? It was the first time somebody brought something and he posted it. I think that it just kind of like one up and people were like, oh, I'm going to make Jason this focaccia bread. I'm going to bring Jason this <laughs> bottle of wine. I'm going to bring him tenderloin steaks. And it was because, you know, <laughs> this little. I'm taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for everybody that would like to follow you guys on social media, social media. 
we'll share uh, at the end of this episode uh, links to your social media accounts. Um, I'm, I, you guys are all on Instagram and Facebook, so we'll share that at the end of the episode. And uh, unless there's anything else that's witty and brilliant that you would like to, uh, to share with us before we sign off. No pressure. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys, so very much for joining us. It's been uh, awesome to hear your stories and learn a little bit more about you guys and uh, become have, have more quilting friends. That's awesome. So we really appreciate you taking the time today. And uh, we'll see you next time in the next episode of The Latest Thread. Thanks for watching. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.